And now to the latest in Iraq. U.S. military forces continue to target Islamic State militants today by conducting an airstrike on an ISIS mortar position north of Sinjar. Sinjar is in northwestern Iraq near the Syrian border. It's an area mostly inhabited by Yazidis, a religious group that right now is under siege and attempting to evacuate the region. The airstrike comes just a day after senior officials said the U.S. government had also begun to funnel weapons directly to Kurdish forces fighting the Islamist militants who are advancing in the northern part of the country. It's unclear what kinds of arms are being sent to the region. However, they are reportedly being sent through a covert channel established by the CIA. To talk about the latest U.S. military action in the country and its implications, earlier I spoke with former Texas Congressman Ron Paul. I first asked him about the latest developments and the arming of Kurdish militants. Well, I think it's a little bit late to try to salvage all the mistakes that we've made for the past 24 years. I've been opposed to going into Iraq all the way back to the beginning in 1990 because I believe in non-intervention, that we should mind our own business, and it never works out very well. So in spite of the problems and the obvious people suffering from this, it's a consequence of us being in there. And I don't think the solution is being involved even more so once again and renew all the efforts because I'm afraid it will uh, end up with uh, a lot more violence because they're putting more troops in there right now. So uh, I think the policy that we should follow is one designed to allow the Iraqis to solve all their problems and stay out of this, let them deal with it because uh, we've tried for a long time, we've lost a lot of lives, spent a lot of money, and we've uh, allowed a mess to develop and there's nothing but a mess and chaos there. And in a way, we're partially responsible for that. Mm -hmm. And seeing the way ISIS has operated so far, do you think the Kurds are even capable of taking ISIS on at this point? Well, you know, the Kurds have always had this reputation of being great fighters and uh, that they're very good at it. And uh, I, I would think that they're, they're quite capable of doing this. I'm surprised that they haven't uh, retaliated a little bit better. But one of the reasons why they haven't done very well is that ISIS ended up getting a lot of weapons from us. And uh, they, they've captured weapons. They've got them out of Syria. And I'm sure there's some that came from Libya. So they're well armed. So we haven't done the Kurds any favor whatsoever. Uh, so it would have been much better, of course, uh, you know, when when the whole crisis started in the early part of this century is just allow the, uh, the Kurds to have their own country. And by now they would be in much better shape. But I think our policies indirected has made it very difficult for the Kurds to defend themselves because their enemies are well armed with American weapons. And in the case of Syria, we saw the U.S. struggle quite a bit as they tried to decipher exactly who to arm within the opposition. And as a result, some of those weapons fell into the wrong hands. In the case of Iraq, the U.S. is arming a much more organized Kurdish force. Do you think there's still concern uh, that weapons could really fall into the wrong hands here? Absolutely. They always, there's, that's always the possibility. The intentions are always good. Uh, but there's uh, always the danger of this ha happening. So I would stick to the basic principle that uh, we have a strong national defense. We defend our national security. We don't get involved in fights around the world. We don't get involved with uh, civil uh, strife and civil wars and especially what was going on in the Middle East. So no, I think the argument stands uh, on its own merit that we shouldn't, shouldn't be involved in doing this, you might say, well, yeah, but the Kurds are a lot b better people to support than, say, the unidentifiable uh, groups of rebels that were in Syria, which is uh, quite possibly be, be the case. But I think if we'd have stayed out of uh, Iraq, uh, we, the whole world would be a lot better off, and I think the Kurds would be a lot better off as well. Well, the Obama administration says it must act in order to protect American personnel and diplomats stationed at the U.S. consulate in Erbil. If the city falls to Islamic militants, ISIS could have, uh, of course, theoretically progress even further. Under that logic, do you agree that some kind of military action is needed? Yeah, we should send in an airplane and bring them out because it's a war zone and why uh, 
Why, why look for some disaster to happen like it did in, in, in Libya, you know, and, and our ambassador getting killed? So I would say, yes, the military has a responsibility to retreat when they need to, and uh, it's a fight that we have lost. Uh, I think we have spent too much. And uh, look, I lived through the time and was in the military during the Vietnam War, and what a disaster that was, and it ended up with a retreat. Uh, and, and look how much better off uh, Vietnam is uh, today because we just flat out left after we and the French have done, have done such harm to the Vietnamese. So I think the sooner we get out of there, the, the better. Uh, we don't have a moral responsibility. We don't have a constitutional responsibility. It has nothing to do with our national security. It, it jeopardizes our national security and it's bankrupting our country. And this is exactly what Osama bin Laden wanted. He wanted to engage us over there because he says, I'll bring you down like I brought the Soviets down because we'll take you to bankruptcy. And, and we're doing the same thing because we flat out can't afford it. It's a failed policy. I think after so many years and so many decades, we ought to admit the truth. So you believe there's no moral obligation whatsoever on the part of the U.S. to go back in there? Not as a government. I think people who are interested uh, and they want to donate money and send the Red Cross over there to help people, I think that's very legitimate. But no, I do not believe that uh, we have any moral responsibility to pack up, send more troops over there. Every day you read about more military going in. And of course, they said we, had, we don't want to have boots on the ground. Well, we never got rid of the boots on the ground. We had uh, special forces and the CIA and others involved, very much involved, always prepared to go back in. So uh, no, I, I think it's a, it's a bad right. situation, and we do not have this obligation. You, you did mention boots on the ground. You know, in the past, President Obama has said that combat troops are not going to be fighting in Iraq. He's made that clear several times. Yet at the same time, we've heard the Obama administration say no option is off the table when it comes to military involvement. Uh, do you think President Obama will stick to his word, or is this essentially mission creep as you see it? Well, of course it is. That's the way we, both administrations have run things. There's always mission creep. And, uh, of course, the Republicans, uh, the hockey's Republicans now are hysterical that he's not bombing and killing and sending more troops in faster, even with all these failures. It's unbelievable. When are they ever going to quit and say, hey, maybe our policies are wrong? And yet we continue to do the same thing over and over again. So, uh, yes, I think there will be mission creep. I think it's already there. Uh, I, I think we never really left Iraq. And now we're building up the troops again. And who knows what the uh, unforeseen consequences will be. Uh, it may get worse before it gets better. And then we're going to have to send a lot more personnel in. And besides, using bombers and using drone missiles, it's an act of war. We're committing war. And innocent people die. Look how many innocent people have died at the hands of our drone, uh, drone bombs. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, that this same thing will happen again, and there will be a lot of unintended consequences, and it certainly will be a, a, an expected consequence when it will drive us further into bankruptcy. And then, of course, there's the public opinion aspect of this. Now, according to a recent AP poll, 78 percent of Americans think that history will judge the Iraqi war as a failure. And most say the U.S. was right to withdraw American troops from the country in 2011. Where do you think American uh, public opinion stands on this latest retreat back into Iraq? Do you think there are any Americans that uh, believe we should go back in? Yeah, I do, and I think, unfortunately, I think the numbers are going to grow because all you have to do is describe, uh, you know, ISIS and the ruthlessness of, of, the, of the way they act. But, you know, that's all a facade, too, that we have to go in and rescue, uh, you know, the tragedy that is happening in northern Iraq. But what about uh, when all the Christians were run out of Iraq when we were in charge of the government? There was no concern. How about the people who are suffering from, uh, uh, from war in Gaza? Is everybody rushing 
there and say there's a humanitarian concern. What about the people in eastern Ukraine? Eastern Eastern Ukraine. Uh, we're we're actually trying to stop Russia from sending in some help. Uh, at the same time, we're trying to obstruct uh, it, it from coming in. And uh, of course, uh, uh, that that to me, I, I think they're pure hypocrites on who who's which uh, uh, crisis they want to attend to. And uh, I think uh, what we're seeing down around Iraq and all the war that's been going on for all these years has a lot to do with oil, quite frankly. And right now it has to do with oil and probably rescuing our military personnel. But we're, we're digging a bigger hole for ourselves, which we've been doing for decades. That was former Texas Congressman Ron Paul.